Hey guys, so it has been quite a long time since I've posted on YouTube, so let's just get into it. But before, you know, subscribe, follow my socials, etc. Anyway, so this video is going to be me just talking about basically my recap of working at Apple, and I only worked there for like a few months. So I'm just going to talk about like the before, the during, the after. So let's just get started, thanks. So I have my iPad and I just like have like notes written down because if I don't have any notes, I tend to forget what I'm talking about and then just kind of go off on track and then this whole video will just be chaotic. The first thing is my resume. Before I applied or even think, thought about applying, I fixed up my resume. There wasn't really anything for me to fix. I've always had a resume and I have no job experience. I had no job experience because this was my first job and it was mainly just volunteer experience and clubs from high school like Red Cross and UNICEF. So I just had that on my resume. So if you guys are wondering, oh, what did you have on your resume? I didn't have any job experience. I just had volunteer experience and like high school club experience. So that's already telling you something. So the second thing is when I applied, this was last year, June 2021. And this was when they were actually actively hiring for product specialists because in August there was going to be um, an education promotion going on and then it would be the launch weekend in September and then holiday season so they were actively looking for product specialists. The way I applied was through the website so when I went to the Apple website on the top right when I like typed in Apple it says oh looking for a job or something with a job and I just pressed it but now they don't have it because I don't I don't know if they're actively looking for product specialists but honestly the best time to apply is now but at the same time it's in June when they're actively looking for product specialists and that's usually during seasonal time too so I was a seasonal when I got the job but anyways so when you go to the website now you would just go to apple.com go all the way down to about apple and then career opportunities and i put down like my location because i'm not trying to travel like hours to work so i applied to the closest apple next to me so i picked the location and then they had seasonal product specialists open so i applied and then this was the application process so you had to submit your resume and then apple itself had their own application so you know you fly your first name last name date of birth and then just certain basic questions about yourself and yeah so after you fill out the application it gives you again this was last year so i can't remember every single thing so i'm trying to remember as much as i can but i remember when i applied i already knew that there were going to be three interviews the first interview i got an email about it and it was going to be a phone call interview and you just had to pick a time that you were available and it lists you the times so you pick one and then that's basically when they were going to call you in that phone call, I remember the lady, she was like, oh, like, hi, how are you? Basic stuff. And the interviews are basic interviews that are in every single retail store or basically anywhere that you apply. They ask you basically similar questions. So in the first interview, she gave me scenarios like, oh, can you give me an example of when you took leadership and things like that. And thing is, in all three interviews, they want to see that you're like extrovert, that you are capable of socializing they're basically looking for personality i got past my first phone call and then i think a week later or a week and a half later i got another email saying oh you were passed on to round two for interviews and then you had to like pick a day that you were available so the second interview it was a group interview and this all happened through webex because there was no in-person interviews and for the group interview the second one it was me these two other guys that were also applying and then i don't remember who the lady was for this interview she was also also asking about scenarios like give me a time when you did this but she was also asking like other questions i think what made me stand out more was the fact that in every single question that she asked me i was always the first one to talk don't be too logical and meticulous about it be a lot like be a lot more creative like i think i said at one point that apple has like a creative team that measures each like iphone stand and etc and then she's telling me oh yeah they do do that and i was like oh just be creative basically again i waited a week and a half and i got passed on to the third round of inter interviews i got an email pick a time pick a date i picked it and this interview was also through webex but it was with the head manager of the store like the the very top person and then the manager just beneath him. So it was them two and then it was just me. 
Honestly, that was, I think, more scary than anything else. I honestly cannot remember anything about the third interview. I think I blacked out because it was just so scary. Oh, they were asking me about like my availability. Oh, and this is actually one thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning. When it comes to the requirements, you can literally just go to the Apple site and like it'll tell you what the requirements are to apply. I'll tell you about me, that way you'll kind of get a feeling of like what the requirements were. I did have a high school degree. I was in my first to second year of college. I was over 18 and yeah, a week and a half went by for the third interview and at that point I really didn't think I got the job and I was working at Aritzia anyways and then I got a phone call that was the first thing I got I got a phone call and so I answered oh congratulations you were accepted and I was like oh my god thank you and then she was telling me about like how much I was gonna get paid and that stuff so she told me that if I could come in that day to the store to sign some paperwork so I was like yeah sure so I went that day and I signed some paperwork so I'm just gonna mention the pay right now I got paid $20 per hour which was freaking fantastic. There are three days, which is a weekend, where you do Apple Corps, and this is completely mandatory. You have to do the three days of Apple Corps or else you can't work there. So it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it was through Zoom. Usually it's in person. It was from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It was so long. And so it was everyone who got hired from every single location possible. It was like every single location in New York. During that Apple Corps, they just talked about Apple and its core values and what they expect. And then you got to talk to, you got to basically see who's going to be in your store with you. I remember how Apple would say, oh, the people that you're in core with, they will become like your best friends, like that type of stuff. And it, it is true. Like I loved everyone from my core and it was absolutely like amazing. It was three days of that, just talking about Apple, what they expect, the values, how Apple is different from other stores and etc. Then after the Apple Corps, they send you an email telling you basically your schedule for training week. So I think one of my friends had mentioned that in the beginning it was like 14 days, but now I think it was just seven days. And keep in mind, I was actually the first round of people that they hired pre-COVID. Because once COVID happened, they, they didn't hire. So for two years or like a year and a half, they had such limited staff because certain people had quit and etc moving on so this was a seven days of training that you have to do i went in for training it was usually in the mornings i think it was like 9 a.m until like 5 p.m it was so freaking cold i'm telling you right now i'm pretty sure this is for every single location bring a cardigan a hoodie and this was a dead of summer too by the way it was so freaking cold inside apple and so like obviously i brought my lunch or you can go out for lunch because you get like an hour for lunch so it was mainly honestly reading from computers because you have to read about like the rules and like about the products and stuff and it's with your core members and then you have certain scenarios and then you kind of practice on each other and then there's like the leader person who's in charge of training and you talk to her about it and then she would talk about like the rules and about apple oh my god you're gonna get so overwhelmed and they would tell you this too you're going to get extremely overwhelmed during training because there's so much information and you're like, how the heck am I supposed to remember all this? But once you get on the floor, everything is just so much freaking easier and they will tell you that too. So during tra training, we were given our merch. So we got two Apple shirts. They knew your size because you would tell them ahead of time, like during that, uh, when you get um, accepted and they're like, oh, congratulations. They ask you for your size so they can write it down. So they gave us shirts um apple masks an apple notebook a pen and a hydro flask so not everyone gets a white one there's blue green pink my core team we all got the white ones which we're so happy about because we really wanted the white one this is my water bottle now i just forever just need this we also got our name tags and you had to make a bitmoji because that would also be on your name tag Okay, and then the last two days of training is I think one of the important parts of training, which is shadowing. So you wear your normal shirt, not the Apple shirt, and you shadow some, like an Apple employee. And we were all product specialists, by the way. We all started out as product specialists. But the thing is, because I went to Canada, I was kind of a bit behind than my core team. So I was with this other guy who got accepted afterwards. So it was just me and him. And because our days got like a little wonky, so I did shadow people. And then the next thing that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to reverse shadow. So an Apple employee is supposed to shadow you. So you're wearing the Apple shirt and you actually go to a customer and you do the interaction and someone's supposed to shadow you. But the funny thing is, 
I actually never got reverse shadowed. I think I did like barely, but that was the most scariest part. Like I hated being reverse shadowed and I just didn't, I, I never wanted it because it's just so scary. Cause I can't have someone watching me as I'm talking to a customer because I will slip up a lot more. I'll stutter, I'll get way too anxious and nervous. But anyways, I, I got reverse shadowed for like maybe one customer barely. So I was cool with that one. So now I'm just gonna be talking about the zones. So you're not always on cus customer interaction the entire time. Cause sometimes, like if you go to an Apple store and you wanna set up your phone, you go to the setup table and someone's there to help you. So sometimes you're on setup. And then sometimes you're greeted by an Apple employee in the beginning where you have to like kind of form a line and then you talk to the Apple employee and they kind of direct you to where you go. So that's on point. Oh my God, that was my worst zone by the way. I hated, I hated on point. That was the first thing that I hated and then I hated setup. I hated setting up MacBooks and the computers. This is when they introduced the express table, which is usually all the way in the back. And that's where people who are kind of like in and out, like they know exactly what they want. Like it's usually accessories, like you're just wanting to buy a charger. You don't need to actually set up an appointment and blah, blah, blah. So that's usually the express table. And then you can be on regular sales where, where people make appointments and they want to buy a phone. And, and then there's also someone at like the watch table. So if you guys are looking at watches, there's just like someone that's just standing there. And if you want to ask questions, you just ask that person. That was my favorite table because it was just, you just sit there. So yeah, my least favorite zone was on point. So I'm gonna talk about my least to favorite. So it was on point, setup, sales, express, and then watch sales. I think watch sales is my number one. Okay, now I'm gonna be talking about the discount. So the discounts are pretty basic. So we had like our personal discount, which is 25% off. And then we had our friends and family discount, which was 15% off. So when it came to our personal, we could only buy one item of each product for the year. So I could only buy one iPad, which I did. One iPad for 25% off for the year, one phone for 25% off for the year, one Apple Watch for 25% off for the year. And then it was the same thing for the friends and family, except for that one. You got usually 10 items of that product off for the year. So 10 iPads for 15% off, 10 phones for 15% off. But there were certain products that were only like five of each item for the year. It, depend, it depends on what the product is. You also get discounts on services so like iCloud and Apple Care, Apple Music. So the first thing that I had bought myself with my hard earned money was this iPad. It's the iPad Air in blue because my boyfriend's eyes are blue. And this was the best freaking purchase that I've ever made. I freaking love this iPad. And then I bought my boyfriend his very first iPhone. So now I'll be talking about the benefits. If you get permanent part-time, they give you a certain amount of credit for transportation. So like you can use this money for gas. You can use this money for a bus. If one day you're running late and you need to just catch an Uber, you can use it for that. There are also health benefits, but I can't remember what the health benefits are because I never use the health benefits. You also get money for fitness. So if you go to the gym or if you do yoga, anything related to fitness, you get a certain amount of money to kind of cover a little bit of that. There are a lot more benefits. There was like a whole like pamphlet of benefits. I just can't remember because I didn't use all of them. I barely use any of them. I actually don't think I use any of them because I worked there for literally five months. So now I'll be talking about the job itself. I was a product specialist. That's just a fancy term for I was a salesperson. So what that included was interacting with customers, basically giving like a good customer experience, helping them buy a product, helping them kind of choose a product if they were if they didn't know what they wanted to buy. If you're in the setup table, you would help set up people's items. You would basically get them excited for their product and it was a lot of fun, honestly. Your main job is to kind of give your customer the best experience you can give them. So when it came to scheduling, you can tell them ahead of time, hey, like there are certain days that I can't work and they'll put in the system and so you won't be scheduled to work that day. And there are certain days that you don't want to work. Like, it's up to me to give that shift away. You can call into, again, this is for any job, you can call in. I never called in, by the way. Okay, so this was launch weekend. This was in September. This was when Apple announced its new products when they launched the new phone, which is the iPhone 13, 13 mini, 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max. This was from Friday through Monday. And during those four days, Apple provided us, their employees, with snacks and meals and drinks. I would walk in to the break room and I would just see snacks on the table. They would provide you lunch. One day I think it was like empanadas, another day was like bagels, another day was like Mexican food. And if you go in the fridge, there was water bottles and energy drinks. My experience during the launch weekend was so hectic and scary. Honestly, during the launch weekend, they didn't explain what was going to happen exactly. The first day was the worst day because I don't know what was going on. I don't know the routine. I don't know the procedure. And the first customer that I got, her transaction was so complicated. And that just kind of put me down for the entire day. So there was like a huge line that like wrapped around the store. We had to transact every single person on that line. 
So because I didn't know what the day was going to look like, no one explained to me how the launch weekend was going to look like. So literally a day or two before, I was helping someone purchase the iPhone 13 and he did it for pickup for the Friday, for the first day of launch. So the lady, she asked me, she was like, oh, how is it going to work when we pick it up? Like, are we going to pick it up through that a lot of time that they were given? When you order a phone for pickup for the launch weekend that time that you choose you can come in before and just wait on the line and you'll get the phone this is just to make sure that you have a phone you're gonna get that phone that day no one explained to me that you can come in earlier later you but you have to wait through that line you can't kind of skip the line and be like oh it's 12 o'clock i get my phone now i was helping out another customer and i had to go get a label from another table and in that table it was a guy and the girl and they were older too they were like in their 40s i think and then the guy was like this was her and the second he said that i was like oh my god because they looked mad and so they were like oh she told us this blah blah and then luckily enough my coworker, he was like hey like don't worry about it they're like just go take care of your customer don't worry about this one so i left and then after i noticed that he was done with his customer i go to him like hey what happened they're like oh they thought they could just come in blah blah and i was like Okay, well, I didn't know. No, they did not communicate it properly, which made me so angry because I did not know what was happening with that day. So the first day goes by, I'm literally texting my sister, my boyfriend saying this is like the worst day ever. And, and then I come home and they had ordered me Kidobo, which is my favorite food. And they ordered me donuts, which is my favorite dessert which was very sweet of them. Also that day, another customer bad customer experience was, this was a couple, a young couple. They had come here for school and they were gonna buy a phone. So at this time, again, this I'm new. First of all, Apple should have hired us way before because I was new and this was like the beginning of September. So this was, I think my maybe my fourth day or fifth day of working there. So they traded in their phone. And because normally, whenever people trade in their phones, they usually don't ask for the SIM because for the iPhone 13, you don't need a SIM card. You can just automatically have their phone number embedded into the phone itself. You don't need your SIM. And because they were transfer students, I'm telling you, it was, first of all, it was because I was extremely nervous and I was scared and it was my first time. And like, it was just so scary. I completely forgot that they're transfer students. They're going back to their own country that they need their SIM card. I forgot. And so I gave in the traded phone to like the runners from backstage. And then I set them up to the setup table. And then one of my coworkers, I'm sorry, but this coworker I did not like. They were so rude. He was like, oh, did you give them back the SIM card? And I was like, oh my God, no and stuff. And then he was like, okay, well, they need it. He was not providing me any solutions. By the way, he's, he's like older, like a lot older than me. He could have just told me like what to do. And so I had to go to the one of the managers. I hated this one manager. I hated her so freaking much. I told her what the situation was. She was like, she was basically like yelling at me and being so rude. And I'm like, bro, I was working here for five days. This is my first time at launch weekend. Like, don't give me that. She's like, oh, figure it out, blah, blah. I'm like, she was the manager that I hated with all my life. I freaking hated that manager so much. She was so freaking rude. I hated her. But I figured it out, whatever. And then he got his SIM card, so whatever. So that was launch weekend. And now I'm just going to talk about like the typical day at Apple. So it obviously depends on your shift. If you're an opening shift, you know you just come into the store. You go to the break room. You clock in. And then you just change. Put away your things. Check your work email. If you're an opening shift, you kind of go through like a daily download. So like your goals for the day and talking about like a certain customer, like experience and any news, they would just talk about that. And then if you're closing, you just end up like, you know, cleaning, wiping down everything, taking out the garbage, basic stuff. You're not trying to get the customer to buy the most expensive thing. You're trying to get the customer what they need or want. You have hour breaks and you have 15 minute breaks depending and then you have 30 minute breaks depending on your shift. So this is the last thing that I'll be talking about, which is the problems at Apple, in my opinion, and in my experience, that was the lack of communication between managers. It was so annoying because one manager would tell me, okay, like this is what you're zoned for. Okay. Um, so this is what you're going to do. And then as I'm doing that job that that manager told me to do, another manager's like, what are you doing? That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Blah, blah. And I'm like, this manager told me that, no, you're supposed to be doing this. I'm like, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking about when I quit because this was actually a hilarious story that shows that there was such a, there's such a lack of communication between the managers. I gave in my uh, two weeks notice, whatever. So in that notice, it's like, okay, this is my last day of working at Apple. So I went in for my last day and then I, and then that was it, you know? Tell me how, literally the next day I'm going to Sephora with my sister and my dad and I get a call from the Apple product zone phone. I answer the phone and I'm like, hello. And this is one of the store leads. He's like, oh, hey, Firza, I, I see that you were scheduled to work today and stuff. I just want to check up because like, you know, you've never called in and like, I just want to make sure that you were okay. And like, if there was any way that I could support you or whatever. I'm like, hey, um, I actually quit like two weeks ago. My last day was two days ago. And then he was like, oh my God. I was like, I'm surprised. I thought someone would have told you. And he was like, cause he even knew. He's like, you would have, you would think that they would tell me that you freaking quit so I can like fix a schedule. And I'm, 
yeah, he was just telling me like nice things and he was okay, he was like, take care and whatever, I was like, take care. But do you see the lack of communication that like no man just told him, hey, she quit. It was so messed up. For my review, I would say that I 1000% loved working at Apple. I worked there for five months and I honestly did enjoy it. Obviously at the end of the day, it is a retail store, so you're gonna deal with bad customers. You're gonna have bad days. Oh, one more thing, oh my God. Two weeks after I started working, I got a raise. And I started to get paid $22 per hour. So overall, I loved working at Apple. You're gonna have bad customers, you're gonna have bad days, but the pay and the benefits and the incentives just make it so much worth it. And they're very flexible when it comes to scheduling. They work around your school and everything. So, And the reason I quit Apple was for personal reasons. Maybe I'll share it later on down the line. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, subscribe to my channel because I will be posting a lot more. Like I already filmed another video that's ready to be posted within a week. I will be posting consistently. I will be posting any kind of video that you could possibly think of. Makeup, skincare, food, cooking, cleaning, um, room tours, vlogs. I'm going to be recording so many videos. And I already have videos lined up for the next four to five months. So subscribe, follow my socials. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.